In February 2016, the United States and Mexico signed the Repatriation Accords. The agreement came after years of lobbying and complaints by migrants and advocates that people being deported from the United States to Mexico were being mistreated. One of the most common complaints was that personal belongings such as cash, cell phones, and personal identification were not being returned to migrants, and they were being deported without anything. The Accords assured there would be a commitment to safety of those vulnerable individuals who were repatriated, and the Department of Homeland Security would take all feasible steps to ensure that property, valuables, and money retained were available for return to the rightful owner. Joanna Williams is the Director of Education and Advocacy for the Kino Border Initiative, which provides direct humanitarian assistance to migrants who've just been deported to Nogales, Mexico. Joanna also keeps track of alleged abuses at the hands of U.S. officials. So what happens to an individual who is deported without his personal belongings, ID, money, cell phone? It's incredibly uh, dangerous here in Nogales to have not have personal belongings. Um, one piece, or the cell phone is an essential piece of communication, and we advise people here to not uh, borrow any cell phones out on the streets. According to a Migration Policy Institute study, on average, three to 400,000 individuals are deported to Mexico every year, and about 120,000 of them were sent without some form of their personal belongings. The study also highlights the fact that without basic necessities, such as a cell phone, migrants face harassment and extortion, and because they're vulnerable, they're at greater risk for kidnapping and sexual assault by organized crime. Over 50% of migrants carry a cell phone, Without money or ID, it's difficult to obtain a new one. If they're deported without a cell phone, the most likely scenario is that someone will come up to them and say, oh, I'm so sorry about what happened to you here, you can borrow my phone. Uh, and then when they lent that cell phone, they dial a family member. Crime syndicates along the border prey on the fact that migrants have no way of communicating with family members. As a seemingly kind gesture, they offer a free call on their cell phone. If the migrant uses it to call family, especially in the United States, personal information is captured and used to extort money from the family members they just called. Roberto was recently deported without his belongings. He wanted to remain anonymous because he was concerned that speaking publicly might hurt his chances of getting his personal items returned. He lived in Los Angeles for over 30 years as an undocumented immigrant before being deported to Nogales, Mexico. He says he's lost his cell phone and about $100 in cash, a watch, and all his personal identification. And he knows of many other migrants that this has happened to. Marcela Celorio Mancera is the Consul General of Mexico in San Diego, California, and was instrumental in strengthening the accords. So, regarding the belongings of the migrants, when we have uh, the proof, we can uh, help them to get uh, their belongings. When asked why migrant belongings are still not being returned, she said every case is different. Migrants are key to the process of getting their belongings returned. They must file complaints, make claims, and have proof detailing their lost possessions. They must make follow-up calls and visit government offices in Mexico, all with no guarantee their possessions will ever be returned. Most never even bother. Roberto says he's done everything required, but after a month of waiting, the consulate still hasn't located his belongings. It's difficult to determine whether the newly signed accords have had any effect, but people on the ground who see migrants on a regular basis agree that more than a year later, the accords are still not being fully respected. The U.S. government must know what you're telling me about the dangers, the pitfalls, so it's willful, right? Exactly. Yeah. When you're putting people at risk at the in border regions, you're strengthening the um, criminal uh, networks here, not weakening them. I reached out to the Department of Homeland Security to see what role they play in protecting personal belongings. They did not respond. The repatriation accords are not law. They are agreements and require constant dialogue and cooperation between the two countries to make them effective. Advocates are concerned. With the current ramp up in immigration enforcement and few mechanisms for oversight, the violations of the accords are likely to continue. For The Marshall Project, I'm John Carlos Frey.